If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. It will have to. Columbus didn't discover America. You can't discover a place where people are already living. But we celebrate that every October. It's a lie. We need to get over. We we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. They're not comfortable with them to talk about the possibility that Africans were here before the Europeans. So what do you do with the heads in Mexico that you find at San Lorenzo, at Tres Zapotes? What do you do with those? All right, you ignore them. What do you do with Columbus's diary that says the Africans know a way to the West, but it goes around the doldrums, we would never survive? What do you do with that? You ignore it. What do you do with Balboa's diary that says we came upon this African village in the Isthmus? How did these Africans get here? What do you do with that? You ignore it. It's a lie. We need to get over. We we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. Why to preserve the myth that the Europeans were here first? What do you do? with all of this written literature and history that says that Abu Bukhari the second of Mali sent 200 ships to the west and one came back and said they were afraid that the others disappeared and then to have Balboa find this village that looks just like Mali where he was what do you do with this information? You ignore it! You ignore it. Why? To preserve the myth of white superiority. That's what our whole educational process is devoted to. If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. What do you do with this whole history? This is a written history, my dear. Written. I'm not talking about hearsay. I'm not talking about a griot said this. I'm not talking about something handed down from one generation to the other through voice. I'm talking about written history of the Egyptians. What do you do with this? You ignore it. So let me ask you a question just for me to you, right? Uh, just out of curiosity. If I enslaved you, Right? If I set you on fire, did medical experimentation to you, raped and abused your mother for 400 years, would you trust me to give you an education system, an economic system, a medical system? Absolutely not. You wouldn't trust me, right? No. So can I ask you a question? And you're smiling about it. This is the beautiful no, no, thing. No. But it's true. Yeah. So now I have to ask you a question. Yeah. What made us accept it? What do you think? I don't know. You don't know? You have no idea? If I had to take some kind of guess, uh, force? It was force. See, now let me tell you something. I respect you. See, people want to call me racist, but I respect you because you know why? You're actually telling the truth. Yeah. But see, our people are, this is no why. Our people have been destroyed so much with their consciousness and their brain. They really don't even believe what I'm saying. And you know this too, for the most part, right? Yeah. Exactly. They don't even believe it. They couldn't believe, they literally believed that this is the way that we truly was living our entire lives. Yeah. And you yourself, how long have you been on the police force? 14 years. 14 years, mm -hmm. right? You graduated college, high school? College. College, right. So you yourself, when you look at the curriculum that's in the school system, right? Is it enough? Or is it telling the truth? Uh, oh, there's, wait, wait. There's, there's partial truths, and, but there's a lot of, I guess we could say, redacted information. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, give me the truth and a lie. Christopher Columbus, right? We just want to use him for example. Christopher Columbus went across South America, right, and did some of the most most inhumane and heinous crimes, right? Now these same crimes, right, and these same laws that we have today, if we was to enact those those laws on the people that are descendants or benefiting from the acts of Christopher Columbus, yeah. all of y'all would be in jail. Yeah. Right? That's true, and I'm telling the truth here. Now knowing that right there. Can you tell me, as a man, don't you understand how I feel? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely right? Yeah. So, do you see that these crimes right now in black communities are not, these are not people out here waking up every day and saying, you know what, let me kill. These people are waking up every day with no other out, but there's no other out other than what's being programmed to them through TV. Drugs, rapper, football, basketball player, and if I can't read, 
then what I'm not going to have a career. Yeah. So therefore, what is my next outcome? Hmm? Right. The same crimes, not even, don't even scratch the surface of what Christopher Columbus did, but the same crimes. So that we're getting less crimes, that we're getting more time for. Yeah. Sad, yeah. I love my brothers. I value you, my brothers out here. And I want y'all to know something. Did you hear what that man said? He admitted to the tragedy, to the atrocities that we, that they are that they have done to us, and <laughs> and continuing to do, exactly. and continuing to do. Christopher Columbus did not discover America. Like how you can discover a place where the inhabitants are watching you arrive from the shore. Uh, there are actually many other mariners before Columbus that discovered America as well. Decades earlier, even eons earlier, many of these pre-Columbian explorers might have come from Africa. Columbus himself was aware that African mariners had preceded him. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. No. In 1493, Columbus stole all he could see. Now Columbus continued going around whimsically renaming every island he could find. That the origin of these many place names and botanical names in Mesoamerica uh, actually sounded distinctly like other languages in Africa. The presence of certain plants that predated Columbus but originated in Africa. For example, the calabash bottle gourds on the Congo estuary. The Portuguese, like Captain Pereira, had heard that African traders were visiting Brazil in the mid-1400s. Islamic historian Amir Hajib reported that voyages west from Mali taken the Canary Current up and around and then, oh, they go over, the, they fall off the edge of the earth, and then they come back and they, and they, uh, they make landfall back again in, uh, in uh, Cape Verde. King Constantine Ravenous reported seeing blacks upon reaching the New World evidence, including pre-Columbian African skeletons, which have been found throughout the Americas. Now, dating between 800 BCE and 300 CE, they clearly feature three races, and uh, there are, it's depicting black and Indian allies and a battle against white invaders. In southeastern Mexico, there are 18 rock statues that of heads up to 11 feet tall that are facing the ocean, looking east. Now, archeologists call them the Olmec and date from at least 900 BCE when they were mysteriously buried for some reason. The smallest one was six tons, so six to 50 ton blocks to quarry them and carry them 75 miles away from the quarry and then carve them and then erect them. Jose Meglera Serrano, the, uh, the archeologist who first uncovered them, uh, he said he pointed out the facial features look amazingly like African blacks. Look at how close this is. White people don't think that you could go this is closer compared to more than twice the distance that Columbus sailed. Uh, which state is closest to Africa? Maine. Yeah, geometry. Science. Okay. Did the Aztecs build this? No. They did not build this. No, the Aztecs, they found it. They found it. 600 years later. Who who built this? That is a good question. Okay. Nobody knows exactly, but 80% of the spurs, they mentioned the Quiquilcas guys. It was another culture. Mm -hmm. So Olmecs, the oldest, the mother's culture, the people in Mexico, Aztecs, Mayas, Toltecs, Zapotecs, and many more, they believe it, that Olmecs was the number one and was the most. Olmex? That is in the coast, in Veracruz and it's a, it's a in It's a native um, culture called Olmex. My civilization, as I said, is a sort of a cultural unification. Even some cultures came from the other side of the ocean, some cultures were here already, like the Olmex. And they are considered probably the roots of the Africans because of the Negroid features. Cultures came from the other side of the ocean before Cristobal Columbus. What wow. we are seeing here is a cultural evidence in order to really know that well, what we had here, talking about the Mayas, is the encounter of all the cultures of the world. When we talk about the Egyptians, when we talk about the Mayas, actually they even interact. 
just like what the Book of Mormon says, the same people build the pyramids of Egypt, same people build these structures or actually develop the Mayan civilization. But when they are talking about the same people, could be sometimes in a different time frame or could be the same. But what we're trying to actually share is the information about that. We're talking about a huge cultural unification. Columbus was the first person to suggest there were Africans in America before him. He actually says in the journal of his second voyage that when he was in Haiti, black-skinned people had come in large boats from the south and southeast trading in gold-tipped metal spears. What's interesting about that, so upon returning to Spain, is that he actually took the spearheads and he, uh, he sent them away and they had them uh, assayed and it turned out to be these spearheads were covered in this metal, that uh, this alloy that the inhabitants called guanin and uh, the metallurgists uh, actually found out that this was an alloy of 32 parts. It was like 18 of gold, 6 of silver, 8 of copper, which, dun, 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 matched the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. Do you have any ocular proof uh, of our presence in this hemisphere before Columbus. Oh yes, um, there are many heads of West Africans in the latter period than their earlier heads in the pre-Christian period. Something you can show us that yes. I can show in terms There's of There's one I, I, um, that doesn't deal with the period I've been dealing with, but which is very unusual because it has braids. And this was this was deliberately um, covered up because this head has been, it, it has not been shown in public for about 50 years. It so these are braids here. Yeah, these are braids. This is a stone head. And where does this go back to? What this era? goes back to Tresapotes. It's a period before Christ and it's found on the head, on a great stone head, a great sculpture in stone. Before there, Christ. Bef before Christ, it's found in the Olmec civilization. At least a dozen explorers, including Constantine Ravenes, reported seeing blacks upon reaching the New World. In fact, in 1513, Spanish explorer Vasco Nunez de Balboa said he met members of a tribe of Ethiopians in Panama. And according to Balboa's log, these men came from a totally black village that was two days' journey away. And he figured that these blacks had come from Ethiopia uh, at a much earlier date. Now, Islamic historian Amir Hajib reported that voyages west from Mali were happening in the year 1311, just uh, 150 years before Columbus. Ferdinand Columbus wrote a book in his father. He said, my father told me he saw Negroes north of Honduras. And then I found that Vasco Nunez de Balboa in September 2015, the year 1513, coming down the slopes of Quarcoa, which is in Darien, which we now call Panama, actually saw two tall black men. 1858 was the discovery at Tres de Potes of a stone head. Now this is the stone head. This is the first head to be discovered. Now look closely at this head. When the Mexicans saw this head, when their scholars saw this head, scholars like Orozco Ibera, Jose Melgar, etc., they were absolutely convinced that there were Africans in America at some ancient time. Why were they convinced? They were convinced by two things. By the African physiognomy, the, 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 the dome of the forehead, the, the cut of the nose, the, the, the jaw, the mouth, etc., but also by something which has never been mentioned in the archaeology for some odd reason. And that is, at the back of the stone head, there was hair, detailed Ethiopian type hair. No Native American has hair like that. I don't remember how it was that, that, that Barack Obama, I think, had said that um, the uh, uh, that uh, Islam had played a great role at the founding mm -hmm. of our nation, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, David, I I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. As a student of history, 
I also know civilization's debt to Islam. It was Islam at places like Uluzar that carried the light of learning through so many centuries, paving the way for Europe's renaissance and enlightenment. I also know that Islam has always been a part of America's story. The first nation to recognize my country was Morocco. In signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, our second president, John Adams, wrote, the United States has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And since our founding, American Muslims have enriched the United States. They have fought in our wars, they have served in our government, they have stood for civil rights, they have started businesses, they have taught at our universities, they've excelled in our sports arenas, they've won Nobel Prizes, built our tallest building, and lit the Olympic torch. And when the first Muslim American was recently elected to Congress, he took the oath to defend our Constitution using the same Holy Quran that one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, kept in his personal library. Perhaps the most impressive of all the Muslim voyages to the New World, which we can today document, concerned the Mandinka of West Africa. Writing in the pathways of sites in the provinces of kingdoms, Shihab ad-Din al-Umari recounted a conversation that he had with the famed Mansa Musa, who was traveling through Egypt in his famous Hajj pilgrimage. And according to Mansa Musa, a few years before, his older brother, Abu Bakari, who was then the ruler of the Mandinka Kingdom of Mali, had sent two expeditions west across the Atlantic, two fleets. This would be around the year 1310. And we know they reached America. We know that because of the linguistic evidence, if for no other reasons. There is today in South America an American Indian tribe that uses Mandinka ideograms as its form of written communication. And there is in North America an American Indian tribe located in the middle of the Atlantic seaboard who which back around the mid 18th century, a Moravian missionary went and studied with them and wrote a dictionary of their language. Modern linguists looking at that dictionary have discovered that many, many, many of those words are in fact Mande, the language of the Mandinka Indian. America kiss my balls. Balls. All of y'all. Hold on, hold on. You know it's kind of easy, I'm done being preachy I'm a different species, it's Yeezy Yeah, tell the devil get beneath me All I did was tell the truth and nobody believed me